This is not for a homework assignment, this is a review video. So instead of writing none, I think I'm going to write review. And the reason I'm doing a series of review videos is that the next homework assignment, part of it relies heavily on factoring. Factoring is one of those skills that you are presumed to have prior to taking a college algebra class. But based on my 20 years experience of teaching college algebra, I can safely say, well, I'll be starting 20 years in the fall, I can safely say that factoring is a skill that a lot of college algebra students don't have going into college algebra. So I'm gonna do a series of factoring videos, but I'll tell you right now, if your factoring skills are there, skip these, go into the module for homework 1.5 and go ahead and start watching those videos. But if you find yourself uh, forgetting how to factor something, these videos will be, will be here to help reinforce those skills. So, let's start with video one for factoring review. Uh, prior to reviewing, I want to define the word factor in two capacities, as a verb and as a noun. The word factor as a verb means to rewrite as a multiplication problem. The word factor as a noun means part of a multiplication problem. We will be doing a lot of factoring to get factors and then do things to those factors. Uh, I don't quite know how many videos I'm going to have in this series. It looks like it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, maybe. I guess we'll see. Six if necessary. But we're going to start by factoring out, by factoring a GCF, factoring by GCF. Do you recall what GCF stands for? GCF stands for greatest common factor. Essentially, factoring by GCF is doing the distributive property backwards. Somebody did the distributive property. We got an answer. I would like to recover what the original problem was. Technically speaking, there's an infinite number of ways that you can distribute to get a particular result, but only one way that involves the greatest common factor. In other words, what was the greatest factor that could have been distributed to get the expression that you're given? So, for example, let's take a look at the first one. Factor 12x to the fourth power plus 30x to the third power. What you're thinking is there was a distributive property problem that happened. Because this expression has two terms, we're going to have two terms in the parentheses. And we want to figure out what is the largest chunk, the greatest factor if we can, that we can put in front as the part that got distributed. There's evidence in the problem of what that factor may be. But you mainly look in two locations, or you look for two characteristics of the greatest common factor. The first thing you do is look at the coefficients. Um, coefficient, by the way, a word that I will use early and often, is the technical word for the number part of the multiplication problem. Visually, it's a number in front of a letter. So in the term 12x to the fourth, the coefficient is 12. And in the term 30x to the third, the coefficient is 30. So when you're factoring out a greatest common factor, the first thing you do is look at the coefficients and ask yourself what is the greatest number that will divide into both of them. That would be the greatest common factor. For example, I can divide both of these by 2, but there's a greater number than that. I can divide both of them by 3, but there's an even greater number than that. I can divide both of them by 6, and that is the greatest number that will divide into both 12 and 30 evenly. So the greatest common factor of 12 and 30 is 6. Now, there is a way to systematically dissect these numbers and locate their greatest common factor. But in most of these problems, it will be fairly transparent what that greatest common factor is. If you would like to see the algorithm for taking two or more numbers and locating their greatest common factor, send me a message and I'll create a personalized video just to show you. But for now, let's assume that we can look at 12 and 30 and realize that the greatest number that divides into both of them is 6. The second thing you look at when you're building your greatest common factor are the variables, and more specifically, their exponents. This first term has 4x's multiplied on it, and this second term has 3x's, obvious by their powers. So x times x times x times x, x times x times x. To locate the greatest common factor from terms with the same letter, you simply go to the least power. The least power here is x to the third. The reason it's the lesser of the two powers, even though we're looking for the greatest common factor, 
is remember, we're undoing the distributive property, meaning that everybody got some X's. Well, what's the most number I could have given everybody? I couldn't have given everybody four X's because he would have had at least four. The smallest power tells you the most number of X's everybody could have received. This first term could have received three X's because it wound up with four of them. This one could have received three X's because it wound up with three of them. So when it comes to the variables, you find a common variable and you grab its lowest power. That's what the greatest common factor is. Now we have to figure out what was over here that got distributed. You can think that's pretty straightforward, but you can also just unmultiply it. Now what do I mean by unmultiply? Well, I'm reversing the multiplying process. Multiplying takes us from here to here, so I'm unmultiplying. But isn't that just called dividing? So if I want to locate the terms inside the parentheses prior to the 6x to the 3rd being distributed, I can just go back over here and divide out the greatest common factor. Literally put the greatest common factor underneath each term and then proceed to divide or in the, in the uh, perspective of a fraction, proceed to reduce. The numbers are pretty easy. This is 12 over 6, that reduces to 2. But when it comes to the letters and the powers, you have to use a rule that says when you have one letter on top of another, you just take the top power minus the bottom power. So in this case, the top power minus the bottom power, 4 minus 3 is 1. So this would be 2x to the first power. Don't really need the 1, I'll get rid of it in a moment. On the second term, 30 divided by 6 is 5. And if I subtract the powers, 3 minus 3 is 0. Now you might be thinking, don't the x's just flat out cancel? And you would be correct. But I wanted to point out that systematically, you can always just do one power minus another. If the, if the difference is 1, you don't need it. But if the difference is 0, you have to take advantage of an exponent rule that people tend to forget. But anything to the 0 power is 1. Well, except 0 to the 0 power, but we'll not worry about that right now. Well, if anything to the 0 power is 1, this is 5 times 1, which is 5. So yeah, the x's did just cancel technically because when you subtract their powers, you get 0, and anything to the 0 power is 1. Now, this may be a lot of hoopla just to do this, to, this GCF problem. Uh, several, hopefully all of you, could look at this and go, well, I can divide out a 6, I can divide out an x to the 3rd, and when I do, this is what I get. Great, that's the place I would like you to be. But algorithmically, identify the GCF, and then you can divide each term by it to see what's left. Uh, I'd like you to pause the video to see if you can do the other two GCF problems I have set up here. Uh, the second one is fairly straightforward. It's just got it's just more congested, and the third one has some specific directions about factoring out a negative GCF. In the next video, you'll see why we need that in our skill set to be able to factor out a negative GCF. So I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can factor both of these. Either you pause the video and try, you didn't, and you're just waiting for me to do it. But either way, here it goes. So the second example, 3x to the second times y minus 15x to the third y to the second plus 21xy to the second equals. Because this is a trinomial, has three terms, we know that our parentheses is going to have three terms, first two separated by a minus, second two separated by a plus, and that's to identify what they have in common. Starting with the coefficients, three. Well, I don't have many options there. Three can only be divided by two numbers, one and three. By the way, one is always a common factor. Sometimes it is the greatest common factor. The only other possible choice is three, but a quick look at the other two coefficients, and yeah, they are divisible by three. So we're going to take out a three. In fact, while we're taking out the three, why don't we actually factor it out? Nobody said you must identify the entire GCF and then factor it out. You can do it in bits and pieces. Okay, everybody, get divided by three. Three divided by three is one. 15 divided by three is five. 21 divided by three is seven. Next, we have x's and y's, we'll take them in turn. Now before you write an x over here, you should make sure it is in common. That's what the C stands for. Is x a common factor to all the terms? Yes. So, I can take out some x's. 
how many. You look for the least power. Power is two, power is one. The implied power is, excuse me, ahead of myself. The power is two, the power is three. The implied power is one. So we can only take out a single X. Let's go ahead and take that out. Everybody give up an X. You have an X squared. I'm gonna get rid of one of your X's so you'll only have a single X left. You have an X to the third power. If I remove one of its X's, it'll have an X to the second power. And on the last term, it only has one X, so when I remove it, it has no more X's. And then to the Y's. Does everybody have a Y in common? Yes. Y, Y, Y. And by the way, if this first Y weren't here, the answer would be no, and you wouldn't take out any Y's. Each term would keep its Y's. But it did. Everybody has some Y's in common, so we go grab the smallest power, which is Y to the first. So a Y is getting factored out, and now everybody's going to give up a Y. Lose your Y, you don't have any left. Lose one of your two Y's, you'll have one left. Lose one of your two Y's, you'll have one left. And there you go. Now in this answer, there is one piece that is unnecessary because it's implied, and that would be the one. So it's not wrong, but it's also not necessary. Now the last one to factor out a negative GCF is pretty much business as usual, except as the instructions imply, your GCF is going to be negative. Now what impact will that have? We'll see in a moment. So we're going to factor out a negative GCF. Let's look at the 12 and the 4. The greatest common factor to those is 4. Let's look at the M's. Everybody has some M's. Here's the smaller of the two powers. And let's look at the N's. Everybody has some N's. Here's the smaller of the two powers. Now here's the effect of factoring out a negative. When you factor out a negative, it's like dividing by negative one. And the effect of that is everybody's signs change. So, the effect of factoring out a negative is that these two terms will change signs. Since both of them are currently negative, that means both of them will end up being positive. So let's go ahead and put a plus here. Don't really need to write a plus in front of the first one. A term without a sign in front of it is assumed to be positive. All right, so we took care of the negative. Now let's divide everything by four. 12 divided by four is three. Four divided by four is one. I may or may not need that one, just like I didn't need this one up here. Let's take care of the M's. Everybody has, uh, well, of course we already decided everybody has some M's and we're gonna take one M away from everybody. The first term has two m's. When I take away one of them, it has one left. The second term has one m. When I take that m away, it's gone. Now we're going to take away one n from each term. The first term has two n's, so when I take away one of them, it only has one left. And the second term has one n, and when I take it away, it has nothing left, or no n's left. In this case, I need this one because it is the only remaining factor in this term. When it's not, such as up here, we don't have to write the one. And by the way, you can check any GCF problem by redistributing. I think this one would be a good idea since we were factoring out a negative. If I were to distribute to the first term, negative four times negative three is negative 12. M times M is M squared. N times N is N squared, so the first term checks out. And the second one's easy, I'm multiplying by positive one. Multiplying by positive one doesn't change anything, so negative four mn times positive one is still negative four mn. So GCF is really just doing the distributive property backwards. You just have to look for evidence of what was the greatest amount that could have been distributed, and then take it back. Jeez, I gotta work on getting these videos shorter. <laughs>